Rachel Carson vs. DDT Publicizing the Pesticide Problem In the late 1940s and 50s, the infamous pesticide dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, better known as DDT, was heavily sprayed in households and on crops, forests, and even towns in order to eliminate pests. Once a bug comes in contact with DDT, he's lost. Although a few studies suggested evaluation of the long-term effects and dangers of DDT, for the most part, it was viewed as a miracle pesticide that was cheap, long-lasting, and effective. Rachel Carson was one of the first and most influential critics of DDT. Carson's talent for writing and degrees in biology gave her considerable authority, and in her 15 years of work for the Bureau of Fish and Wildlife, Carson often came upon environmental damage caused by DDT. In 1958, a friend's account of DDT killing dozens of tame birds finally convinced Carson to write Silent Spring, the first book to introduce the pesticide conflict to the public in an accessible manner. Carson's persistent advocating for restricting the use of DDT in the United States led to conflict with the agricultural industry and chemical manufacturers in 1962. A decade of debate and legislation finally resulted in compromise with the Federal Environmental Pesticide Control Act of 1972, which restricted the use of DDT around the world and revolutionized both environmental policy and agriculture. In June 1962, excerpts from Silent Spring were published in The New Yorker in a series of three articles that explained why Carson believed pesticides, particularly DDT, should be restricted. DDT harmed the environment, ecosystem, and wildlife, including the national bird, the bald eagle. It caused paralysis, mutations, thin eggs, infertility, and often death. However, the effects on humans were what really scared the public. DDT sprayers often suffered from symptoms of acute poisoning, and over time, DDT wreaked havoc on the central nervous system and liver, and may have even caused cancer, infertility, and mutations in people who simply ate produce sprayed with DDT. Rachel Carson concluded in Silent Spring, Can anyone believe it is possible to lay down such a barrage of poisons on the surface of the earth without making it unfit for all life? Despite this, the public was not sufficiently warned of the dangers of pesticides like DDT, which were carelessly handled. Researchers of the effects and dangers of pesticides were too often funded by chemical manufacturers, resulting in a conflict of interests. On top of this, insects quickly evolved immunity to pesticides. While building her argument, Carson emphasized that she believed in resolving the conflict through compromise. Recognizing the benefits of pesticides, Carson wanted to restrict pesticides instead of outright banning them. The public was hooked. President John F. Kennedy quickly expressed support for Carson's side of the conflict, and on August 30, 1962, President Kennedy assigned the Life Sciences Division of the President's Science Advisory Committee to investigate the effect of pesticides. Silent Spring was published in book form one month later. This is one of the nation's best sellers, first printed on September 27, 1962. Up to now, 500,000 copies have been sold, and Silent Spring has been called the most controversial book of the year. So it is clear that we are to receive heavy doses of tranquilizing information designed to lull the public to sleep, uh, from which it had been so rudely awakened. In order to prevent any legislation and sustain revenue, chemical companies and agricultural organizations stressed the positive aspects of pesticides to the public, arguing that without pesticides, the food supply of the United States would be ravaged. The USDA estimates that without the use of DDT, 80% of America's high vitamin crops would have perished in the 1950s. Countless attacks also questioned Carson's credibility, citing that Carson was a hysterical woman and not even a professional scientist. You had examples of people digesting spoonfuls of DDT just to prove how safe it was. 
This was despite 55 pages of sources and references at the end of Silent Spring. Monsanto's desolate year and the National Agricultural Chemical Association's fact and fancy pamphlet were two of the most pivotal attacks. The story and pamphlet mocked and disproved Carson's facts with biased quotes from industry-funded scientists. One such scientist, Dr. Robert White Stevens of American Cyanamid, was also instrumental in refuting Carson's arguments as the main spokesman of the chemical and agricultural industries. The attacks once more forced the public to consider, were the short-term benefits of DDT to humans worth the permanent cost to animals, the environment, and mankind? However, the tirade against Carson ultimately backfired, as it provided more publicity to the conflict than any amount of advertising could have ever accomplished. On April 3, 1963, CBS reports, The Silent Spring of Rachel Carson reliably summarized all sides of the conflict for the public, interviewing Dr. White Stevens, Carson, and multiple government officials. In the end, the hour-long special was a much-needed victory for Carson, as it helped confirm the ignorance of the government on the topic of pesticides and validated Carson. The show forced the government to act, and six weeks later, on May 15, 1963, the President's Science Advisory Committee published their long-awaited report on pesticides, titled The Uses of Pesticides. The report, clearly supported by President Kennedy, spelled the beginning of the end of DDT. The next day, Connecticut Senator Abraham Ribicoff announced congressional hearings for pesticide usage and restrictions. Carson found that Ribicoff strongly supported her and was simply waiting for the evidence needed to pass binding legislation. One year later, in April 1964, Secretary of the Interior Stuart Udall passed the first legislation towards restricting pesticides a departmental ruling requiring that any pesticide suspected of damaging the environment not be used. This was the first compromise in Washington of many to come. Carson continued advocating for the restriction of DDT almost up to her death on April 14, 1964. Her tenacity and perseverance had paid off. Her legacy was evident, with multiple states banning or strongly discouraging the use of DDT and other pesticides in the following years, and when Congress convened in 1969, there were 31 different proposals to regulate or ban certain pesticides. Other environmental controversies kept the environment in the mind of the public, and the Nixon administration finally took action, establishing the Environmental Protection Agency and Earth Day in 1970. Two years later, the DDT conflict was resolved by the Federal Environmental Pesticide Control Act of 1972. This compromise completely banned the usage of DDT in the United States of America. And William Ruckelhaus, who was the EPA director at the time, gave a very, very sensible speech in which he said, look, it's not for the United States to presume whether or not other countries want to use DDT in malaria control. And so the law was written so manufacturers could continue to manufacture it for sale overseas. The compromise appeased environmentalists who received their desired regulations on pesticides. Eventually, chemical manufacturers were also appeased by an indemnity clause in the Act which compensated manufacturers for losses if a pesticide was cancelled due to unexpected dangerous effects. The 2001 Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants banned the usage of DDT in agriculture throughout the world, except in a few countries. Currently, only the World Health Organization uses limited amounts of DDT to control insect spread diseases. This is still a controversial topic, with many claiming that DDT was effective in controlling malaria, and by causing the US to restrict DDT, Carson caused the deaths of millions. However, decades of studies disprove this, and Carson has indisputably revolutionized agriculture and environmental policy with her views on pesticides and man-made chemicals. She has also provoked the advance of organic farming and discussions on other environmental controversies, such as climate change. Rachel Carson, social reformer, pioneering ecologist, and leader. The conflict Carson publicized and the compromise she provoked changed the world forever.